Welcome to this month's episode of Short Clip Case Studies, brought to you by Natera Performance Solutions. Hi everyone, my name is Ben Haynes. Welcome to my case study, Jumping Over the Moon, a performance project example. So in this case study, we're going to take a look at an athlete that was a developing beach volleyball player with a training history of three to four years. Due to coronavirus 19, there was a lack of competition for this beach volleyballer, which gave us an increase in training time with a focus on performance outcomes. After a quick testing battery and a an analysis of the athlete's current performance, we found that his body mass was 77.7 kilograms, his back squat 1RM was 110 kilograms, his counter movement jump performed with hands on hips and measured via a force dex uh, force plates was 49.4 centimeters with an existing PB of 51.6 centimeters. Also in beach volleyball, the time of the jump is incredibly important. So we took into account his RSI modified, which was 0.62. Finally, his spike jump, which is a sport specific jump as measured by a Vertec was 347 centimeters. And this was his current PB. So a little context first, beach volleyball is a game involving up to 140 jumps per match and a majority of which are performed at maximal intensity. These jumps are specific to the sport and can be classified as spike jumps, block jumps, and jump serves. Obviously, higher jumps are linked to performance outcomes. So after reviewing the athlete's initial data, now the performance team determined that an opportunity existed to attack performance in these variables over a 12 week training block. A focus on improving maximum force development, specifically in the context of a bilateral jump was deemed the most important. To do this, we decided to focus on improving lower body force development via maximal force development and maximal explosive force development. So about the athletes program, the program was broken into four blocks of three week programs, utilizing the triphasic approach as made popular by Cal Dietz. In block one, which was the isometric force, we started on the 8th of June and this went through to the 28th of June. Subsequently, we had block two, which focused on eccentric force, block three, which focused on sport specific high force power, and then a follow up block four, which again targeted sport specific high force power. Blocks one, two, and four all used three sessions per week, which were performed on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Due to some training variation, Block three used four sessions per week, lifting on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. It's important to note as well that there was a one week non-training break between block three and block four, where the athlete was away and had a small break away from all training. So looking a bit more at the programs in depth, as mentioned, block one focused on isometric force. And specifically, the focus was on improving isometric strength at the bottom of the counter movement jump dip. This was still general prep. So we chose a squat depth of parallel to try and, to try and improve this or target this. And with the program detail, we're just gonna have a talk about the lower body work here. The athlete also performed a little bit of upper body work and some specific trunk work, but the focus for this presentation will be on his lower body training. So on the Monday and Friday, the three exercises that were used were the power clean, the back squat isometric and an RDL isometric. And you can see the subsequent sets, reps and intensities that this athlete was working at. On Wednesday, which was more of a dynamic day, instead of the power clean, we used a split stance jumps. Instead of the back squat isometric, we used a hip thrust, a barbell hip thrust. And instead of the Romanian deadlift ISO, we performed a normal single leg Romanian deadlift. In block two, we changed the focus to eccentric force. Here, we had a focus on improving eccentric strength through this counter movement jump range. Again, with this being in general prep, we chose a squat depth of approximately parallel. The specific program detail you can see were very similar exercises, again, utilizing the power clean, back squat and Romanian deadlift. 
However, both the back squat and Romanian deadlift change from an isometric lift to an eccentric lift. And you can also see there was some differences in the set rep modification and the intensities that were worked at. These eccentric uh, exercises were performed without assistance. So the athlete also had to complete the concentric portion of the lift, which they tried to do as explosively as possible. On Wednesday, again, we utilized more of a dynamic day, which utilized boards, boards of jumps. Again, the barbell hip thrust and single leg Romanian deadlift. On program three, we focused on high force power. In this phase, it was a focus on improving strength through the CMJ range with the, the focus moving towards specific uh, preparation. So this time we chose a squat depth similar to the counter movement uh, jump dip. And you can see this particular example for this athlete. One variation during this block is that the athlete was traveling and so there was no sport specific training for this four week period. This allowed us to move from a three day a week to a four day a week lifting block, which obviously came with its positives, but the athlete was performing most of these sessions away from the training environment. So had minimal uh, supervision. And here's a look at what the program looked like. So as you can see, there was two different days, Monday and Thursday, which were the same, and Tuesday and Friday, which were the same. On the Monday, we used a load counter movement jump, a back squat through that sport specific range and a Romanian deadlift. The exercises were performed as fast as possible with a fast eccentric and concentric movement. However, given the loads lifted, quite often the bar was still moving slowly. However, the intent to move it maximally was always there. On the Tuesday, Friday lifting sessions, we used a Borzov jump, which was more of a strength version where the athlete performed each rep individually, catching himself and resetting each rep. We also used single leg Romanian deadlift and the hip thrust. And again, all the percentages of one RM are listed there for you. It's very important to note that during this phase, the athlete in, uh, experienced substantial increases in their one RMs, particularly in the sport back squat and the Romanian deadlift, taking the squat from 110 to 140 kilograms and the RDL from 80 to 110 kilograms. With this in mind, for the next block, I decided to repeat a very similar program. So again, we were looking at high force power, but we, I wanted to re uh, replicate this with the higher one RMs that had been achieved during program three. As the athlete was now back in the training environment regularly, to help improve the uh, intent of each lift, the athlete used the gym aware. Here's the program detail, as you can see. Instead of a loaded counter movement jump, we did change that to a body weight counter movement jump with all reps being performed on a force plate to allow greater monitoring of this athlete. And then you can see the back squat and RDL was performed again at very similar sets, reps and intensity. However, at a higher absolute one RM and therefore higher relative loads. The Wednesday or dynamic day, as we called it, again, utilized Borzov jumps. However, now we swapped to reactive Borzov jump, where as soon as the athlete hit the ground or landed on the ground from the subsequent jump, they tried to rebound and jump as quickly and highly, as quickly and high as possible. The athlete also used the barbell hip thrust and single leg RDL on this day. So to have a look at our monitoring procedures, I'll just talk you through our testing a little bit more. So our counter movement jump, as mentioned it previously, used a hands on hip self-selected dip counter movement. The athlete performed two sets of three reps with enough time between reps to replace their feet if required and to catch their breath. A rest period between sets of two minutes was allowed. For the spike jump, the athlete uh, used a self-selected approach distance. 
the takeoff for the spike jump used a two foot approach, which again is sport specific. This is very natural to the athletes and something that they use uh, a number of times in their approach to hit a volleyball. The athlete was allowed to use as many trials as needed until they stopped improving. So the results that we found from this intervention. You can see the athletes pre-measurements there down the left-hand side of the column. And then post when we did our measurements on the 7th of September, we see that body mass improved from 77.7 kilograms to 83.5 kilograms, which was an increase of about 8%. This increase for the athlete hadn't been directly targeted, although the athlete had been encouraged to increase their daily protein uh, and therefore calorie consumption. Additionally, their back squat went from 110 kilograms to 140 kilograms, which equaled an increase of about 27%. The spike jump for the athlete improved from 347 centimeters, which had been their previous PV, to 354 centimeters. And whilst this only equated to a 2% increase, a 7%, a seven centimeter increase in this particular test is quite important and can have a large impact on performance. Counter movement jump height as measured on the force decks by the impulse method improved from 49.6 centimeters to 54.0 centimeters, which was an improvement of 9%. And additionally, counter movement jump RSI modified improved from 0.6 meters per second to 0.67 meters per second, or the equivalent of about a 12% increase. As the athlete continued training, I also decided to include a bit more of the data from his subsequent programs. And whilst it's beyond the scope of this case study to go into that data, uh, the program in details, you can see that the athlete improved, continued to improve their counter movement jump and RSI modified through October and November. So my take home points and learnings from this, the main take home point was the importance of training fresh. The biggest impact I think on this particular athlete was the reduction in their beach volleyball specific training and the, uh, and the ability for them to train fresh in the gym. The athlete was frequently reporting um, appearing fresh for their sessions and that they could perform at a higher level than they were used to. Additionally, I feel that isometrics and eccentrics are a fantastic pre-season training tool. As the athletes aren't lifting at, at maximal loads, it really is an easy way to reintroduce athletes into training after they've had a training break. Uh, and the addition of that is that the additional force characteristics that can be achieved with this type of training really help this athlete in particular. And I think could have a larger impact across a range of athletes. Another key take home point for myself was the use of velocity monitoring tools and specifically setting velocity targets during the concentric power or sport specific power blocks of block three and block four. This was a great feedback motivating tool for this particular athlete uh, and it really allowed them to maintain a higher training quality throughout sets and throughout their program. An additional thing that I uh, potentially would have liked to have done with this was perform additional monitoring throughout the blocks. Especially early on, block one, block two, and block three, we didn't do a lot of our counter movement jump monitoring. So it was challenging to see what each specific block had, uh, which, what impact it had on counter movement jump height. And this is something that I've uh, since implemented back into my process of monitoring uh, weekly, this particular test. I hope you enjoyed this look at improving counter movement jump height in an elite beach volleyball. And if you have any questions at all, I'd love to talk more about this stuff. So please feel free to reach out to me at Twitter at Ben Haynes. Thanks and hope you enjoyed the presentation.